We're at a critical juncture in terms of uh, se seizing the opportunity to have a thriving life sciences sector in the future and to make sure that we have uh, world-class patient outcomes in the NHS. But what specifically does extra money need to be spent on? What we, what we see in terms of a thriving life sciences sector is it's important that the NHS is world-class. And that means uh, two things to us, making sure that we have the right uh, investment there and, and actually uh, we don't invest even today at average of the G7 at the levels other countries do. So that's what we're calling for because that investment is important to make sure we stay uh, competitive and we have a, a world-class NHS. That's good for patients. It's also good for the life sciences sector. And we also want to see uh, medicines access uh, for patients at a level comparable to other countries. So that's what we're calling for today. So some Conservative MPs, Jacob Rees-Mogg for example, have accused you of special pleading. How do you respond to that? I think what we're about in the manifesto is saying uh, we want to seize the opportunity for uh, both for the industry of life sciences to stay world leading but also to make sure that NHS patients benefit from that and the two go hand in hand in a thriving life sciences sector. Uh, so we see it important to have the dialogue now to make sure that a new government uh, sets the right policy framework to seize those opportunities. But the magnitude of spending increase that you're talking about, £20.8 billion, pounds, that's equivalent to four pence on the basic rate of income tax. I mean, how would you pay for this increase? So what we're calling for is for the NHS to be world class, to have a level of investment uh, that we think matches the ambition to be world leading in life sciences. And what that means is to uh, look at what would be average for the top G7 countries. So just to move us to average is the uh, ask for, for the manifesto to say this is what we think it would take to be world class and world leading. But how would you pay for it? So to move to that average level, that's a discussion that we would need to have with the government. What we're saying is that to seize this opportunity, we believe to secure this opportunity, both for patients and for the life sciences sector, we need that investment. Does higher spending on the NHS guarantee the kind of outcomes that you're looking for? I mean, Gordon Brown increased the NHS budget year after year after year, and it didn't really do a lot for NHS productivity. I think the, the level of investment uh, in the NHS uh, needs to be at a, a good level, so that's why we're calling for average of the G7 to secure the right patient outcomes. But absolutely the focus on NHS patients benefiting and the focus on patient outcomes to make sure that investment is put in the right places is critical. And that's why we see the two things going hand in hand. What will be the industry response if you don't get what you're looking for? Are we talking about disinvestment in the UK? What we're looking at here is to say we think this is a critical point, critical juncture uh, as we come through the Brexit discussions, as we're working closely and collaboratively with the government on industrial strategy. Right, right now is the time to say what policy interventions do we think we need to secure the opportunity for the future. Uh, and that's what we're really focused on. But is that going to mean less investment by the industry in the UK life sciences sector? It, it is important that the uh, next government makes the policy decisions that uh, makes the UK attractive for an investment for all types of companies. That's what we're saying in the manifesto.